Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today, it is up, up, and away at the Ernie Hall Aviation Museum. And I prepare cauliflower rice with garlic lemon shrimp. It is delicious. But first, the ancient art of weaving. Linda is the owner and the artistry behind Lamb Handwoven Rugs. And that stands for Linda Ann Marie Bertanzetti. And I met her at the YSU Festival for the Arts. And I mean, you had hundreds of beautiful rugs and runners and wall hangings. And I just am fascinated with this Thank you. weaving. And you are gonna die when you see how many looms this woman has. And uh, I just could not wait to come out and do an interview with you. Thank you. So how did you get turned on to weaving? Well, it's kind of in my genes. My maternal grandfather wove baskets. And I took a class at Hiram College with the master basket weaver from Shaker Hancock Village. My husband was just building my basket studio. I came home at the end of the week. I said, how do you like this? He goes, it's beautiful. I says, well, it's an Nantucket Lightship basket. And he goes, oh, that's great. He goes, how do you like the building? It's done. I says, that's nice, but I need a loom. He goes, what? I says, I need a weaving loom. And he goes, why? And I says, all these ladies that weave baskets have looms. And he was like, well, okay. He goes, where are we gonna put it? And I says, well, there's room in the studio for one. And he says, oh, well, okay. Well, I got one, it wasn't the right type. It was for fine weaving and not for rugs. So I needed another one. He goes, where are we gonna put it? I said, you have to build another building, Ralph. <laughs> so he built a building. Man, <laughs> He built a building, and we'll go into that one later. Um, it was one room. I could have three looms in there, but needless to say, I soon ran out of room because both of us started finding all these uh, looms in parts, and I just had an interest in seeing what they'd look like put together. Now, these that are hanging here seem to be mm -hmm. a lot different, a lot more of a, I'm not sure if the term is what, flat? Flat. Flat weaving. Mm -hmm. Flat weaving. Hello. I just learned that term. <laughs> just made it up. Uh, rather than these. And right. what is the difference here? What, okay. Why this, do people prefer this? The look. It depends on how you decorate. Probably nine out of ten people want to buy, have the textured wools mm -hmm. or the textured acrylics. Um, it's softer on your feet. They like the look. It's more modern. These are more old-fashioned. Um, people that like like country things or early American yes, things yes. or, you know, um, decorate in the 17, 1800s. They want flat wools. So this is a shuttle. That's a shuttle. And then do I have to make sure it nope, is nope. straight or anything? No, not at all. Just wind it on. You don't want to put too much on. You want to do maybe 20 wraps. You don't want to go beyond this thickness. Okay. So put it on tight. I already put in a header. Every piece is going to start out with a header and end with a header. This is what holds the weaving together. Okay. So that's already on there. So put your foot on a treadle. Either one? Well, we got to see which one is the right one to use. Okay, it's crossed. So that's what you need. So you need to put this through, put the, the whole shuttle through. Oh, put the whole shuttle through. Push okay. it through. The middle? Put it, put it through there. Okay. Just push it through with the shuttle. You don't have to use your hand. Okay. Push it through. There you go. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Oh, okay. Where does it rest? It's going to rest here. Oh. And then you're going to have it on an angle, and you're going to use the beater. Now, pull it back. Okay. Give it a nice hard beat. And another one. There you go. <gasps> so change. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So change your feet. you got to use your other foot. And now you can see the threads have crossed again. And I'm going to shuttle it yes, through. Yes, but we're going to finish this. We don't want this end hanging, so we're going to tuck it in. We're just going to tuck it in there. Okay, so now you need to come through this side, but leave enough here so that it's, it's going to pass through. Okay. okay. And put it over here. Push it through. You don't have to use, there you go. Now we want to pinch. We want to keep it on an angle always, and we need to pinch the side. Why on an angle? 
If you didn't and you had it straight like this and you pulled it, it would start pulling the weaving in. And the colors are beautiful. I mean, it's random, but there is like a pattern to it almost. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just beautiful. Well, cheers. I, I'm going to um, come back a lot more often. Okay. You know, Linda says she serves gourmet lunches when she hosts her classes. And um, I never go tape a segment where I get fed such great food, the peach kugel and stuffed mushrooms. Now, Linda, how can people get in touch with you if they'd like to purchase some of your rugs? Um, you know, what's the best way to reach you for classes? Call or email me. All right, and we'll put that information out. Okay. Now, every year you do shows. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the shows that you regularly sell your rugs? Okay, I go to George Washington's Mount Vernon on the Potomac and down in Virginia. September. That is mid September, right? It's a fantastic show. The Revolutionary War is going on. There's there's fire eaters, there's rope walkers, <laughs> there's just 43 people from around the country selling their wares. And I've been invited back for 10 years now, so it's a great experience. And then you're also Christmas in the Woods? I'm Christmas in the Woods at Shaker Woods, and that's in October for two weekends. I think it's the 8th and 9th, and then the following weekend. And then the YSU is where I, I met you. I guess YSU is over. That was in July. And then Butler, the Christmas show. The oh, first... and that's always the first weekend of December. Yes, uh huh. All right. I mean, really, they're absolutely beautiful. You could learn the oldest art that we practically have. And this really has been a fun afternoon. Oh, good. Thank you for and coming. And I cannot thank you enough, really, oh. for your hospitality. Oh. You've got to check it out. Cheers. Cheers. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Hey, Phil, you were not kidding when you said you were updating this patio. I love the furniture. I love the shade. I mean, this is going to be the best place to party all summer long. Say hello, summer. And you know what? We want people to feel like they're on vacation when they come to the magic tree and hang out on our patio. I mean, this really does have a great vibe. And I love this drink menu. I mean, for summer, the mermaid water, the creamsicle martini. And then you're going to have the bands out here, too. Live music all summer long. We have our summer drink menu. Great food here, as you know. And, uh, you know, put on your shorts, put on your flip-flops, and come on out and hang out with us. That's right. Hey, and you know, you can't count on Mother Nature, but you can always count on the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. Cheers! Cheers, Casey. Here at the Upstairs, we cater to everyone. When you come through the door, I treat you as though you're my friend. So there's all kinds of options here at the Upstairs. There's something on that menu for everyone. Great food, friendly service, very clean restaurant. There's a lot of restaurants, a lot of good restaurants in our community. So I always feel honored when someone comes here. I want everybody coming through that door to leave here with a good experience. Part of growing up in Youngstown is growing up with Rolly Brothers Markets. Even friends who have moved out of town come to shop and say hi when they're home for a visit. And my family has always shopped at Rolly's, and today they are still my favorite grocery store. My recipes depend on the best ingredients, and that's why I get them at Rolly's, where you'll always find the freshest food at the best prices. Rolly Brothers is a proud sponsor of the KC Malone Show. The quality that customers have come to expect is true local flavor. Five Buck Burger Mondays at Sadie's Place, inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town.
Today, I am going to share with you my new favorite food item. Now, you might already be familiar with this, but I discovered it and I absolutely love it. It's cauliflower rice. I love pasta, I love noodles, I love rice, but you wanna watch your carbohydrates, you really wanna watch your gluten, and you're trying to be a little more healthy the older we get. And I was reading this article about cauliflower rice and I had to try it. And it is so easy, and I find it delicious, and I think it's really versatile. So I'm gonna share it with you today. Now, a great dish to pair with this is my easy lemon garlic shrimp. And I'll be preparing that in a little bit. But first, let's talk about the cauliflower. Buy a head of cauliflower, wash and rinse it thoroughly, and then make sure you dry it. Okay, and then cut it into florets and make sure that a lot of this stem is gone. You really don't want the stem, you want more of the flower part for the cauliflower. Now I have a food processor, but if you don't have one, you can also use your box grater and just make sure you use the larger holes. So let's get started. Use the blade attachment in your processor and don't fill it really full, okay? Because you really want to make sure that this is chopped evenly and finely. So I'm just gonna fill it about a quarter of the way full and instead of running at full speed, just pulse it until it gets to a rice-like consistency. Now see how it's really fine and like a rice texture? Real fluffy, little granules of cauliflower. And it is so easy to prepare. Really, I just use the microwave. So no more dirty dishes, no steaming. I think that really makes it, um, it makes it really mushy. And when you do it in the microwave, it is so much better. So I'll be explaining that in a little bit. Let me finish pulsing this. Then we're going to make the shrimp dish that I think pairs perfectly with this. All right, so this is from one head of cauliflower. Look at all that. We have a lot. Now we aren't gonna use it all in this recipe, but I'll show you how to prepare this in a little bit. Now, I think this is a great recipe. It has some nice juices and it really pairs well with my cauliflower rice. This is my easy garlic lemon shrimp. And for this recipe, you'll need about a pound of shrimp with the tails on cleaned and deveined. But there's a lot of spices in here. And if you don't like it hot, I'm going to use the uh, Tony Chachers in this one. But if you want it a little more mild, you can use an Old Bay seasoning, or this one really isn't too hot. It's um, an ancho chili blend. Uh, but I'm gonna make this recipe a little heat. And uh, we'll go over the ingredient list, and then I'm going to make this for you. For this recipe, you'll need two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, six cloves of minced garlic, one teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, one pound of jumbo shrimp, peeled, deveined, with tails on, a teaspoon of your favorite spice blend, Tony Chachere's Creole, Old Bay, Ancho Chili, a quarter cup of dry white wine, one lemon juiced, and the zest of that lemon. You'll also need a quarter cup of chopped parsley. I've already heated the olive oil over medium heat in a fairly large skillet, and now we're gonna begin by adding the garlic, the red pepper seed, and the shrimp. Okay, so after a minute or so, now that this is blended nicely, I'm going to add my seasoning, and I'm going to add the white wine. And now we're gonna cook this, oh, it'll probably be about four or five minutes. Well, the shrimp is pretty much cooked. So now is a good time to add our next level of flavor. We're going to add the lemon zest, and that'll cool a little bit of the heat. 
the juice of one lemon, and that beautiful green fresh chopped parsley. We're gonna let this blend together for just a couple more minutes. Now you see the rice cauliflower made quite a bit from that head. So I just pulled out into a serving bowl as much as I'm gonna need for this recipe. And then I'm going to drizzle some olive oil and then just a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Now you could also use butter or cream if you want more of a creamy texture to your rice. And just mix that up and make sure it is evenly distributed throughout our little cauliflower rice. So every little granule gets a little bit of flavor. All right, and then you just cover it with some plastic wrap. Very easily done. And this will help steam it a little bit and warm it up. And put it in your microwave for three minutes. Well, look who made an appearance. Now that all the work is done. That's right. All right, now I know you've become a fan of this rice cauliflower. Oh, you gave me some of this last week and I have used it every day. I mean, you warm it up three minutes with the plastic wrap and if you don't add anything to it, I just like to put soy sauce on it, like oh, as a snack. You know that Ponzi sauce that I yeah. have? I put some of that on. You like it, the Ponzu. Ponzu, yeah. The Ponzi <laughs> scheme. <laughs> it's a scheme, that Ponzu. <laughs> but um, now, this has a little bit of spice. Okay. So I hope you like it. Tell me what you think. Mmm. Mmm. That's delicious. And I love shrimp. I gotta try the shrimp. I know, just eat it with your hand, Mom. Oh. Just pull it right off. It's not that spicy, it's delicious. It is good. Mm. Cheers, I'm glad you like it's it. Awesome. Another successful. Yeah, none better. None better. Mm. Go to my website, caseymaloneshow.com. Cauliflower rice recipe is there. Also, this easy lemon garlic shrimp. Mm. You are going to love it. Cheers. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Bernard. I'd like to give you some free advice. That's right, a lawyer giving free advice. Hard to believe, right? If you're involved in an automobile accident, don't try to handle it alone. Call a lawyer. A lawyer will be your representative, handling the medical bills, insurance forms, and all the red tape. And hiring a lawyer doesn't mean you'll end up in court or have to pay upfront fees. Need a lawyer? Call us. Hi everybody, I'm Danny, owner and operator of Cthulhu Prime Meats, the third generation butcher shop that not only specializes in quality, but also in customer service and doing things in a new technological way. Chris here is our customer service manager. Chris, what do you think that we do differently than any other grocery store? I think we personally not only offer great product, but we can offer a great customer service experience as well. We try and treat all our customers like they were family and friends, ask how their family's doing just so they can keep in touch and give them that customer experience that they deserve. And the nice part is we not only do that inside the store, but also on CthulhuPrimates.com, where you can buy a lot of our products that we carry here, whether it be grass-fed beef, organic chicken, some of our specialty burgers and bacon. Those are wonderful, and we're gonna provide that same customer experience online as we do in store. Come see us in store or online. Make your next meal one to remember. There's a new standard in assisted living, one that combines comfort, luxury, convenience, and the highest quality expert care. Your loved ones can experience it now in Canfield's premier senior living location. The Inn at Ironwood offers fine dining and amenities such as a concierge, salon, housekeeping, and laundry services, and a truly elegant setting in Canfield. Call us for more information or visit us and take a tour. The Inn at Ironwood, Canfield's premier senior living location. Okay guys, 
you've just made the most important decision of your life. Now what do you do? Your engagement ring should be as special as your bride-to-be. She deserves better than look-alike inventory. Remember, a bigger price tag does not mean better quality. Real men get real jewelry. It's time to get real. Here's what we offer. A unique selection, two graduate gemologists, two craftsmen to design exactly what you want, and a local family-owned business for the third generation. You know what to do. Get real, get Kamara. Four for five till six. Happy hour at Sadie's Place inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town. The museum that bears Ernie Hall's name honors everything regarding aviation. Hall was a local hero whose contributions influenced early aviators like the Wright brothers. Ernie Hall is an aeronautical pioneer. You are barely a year old and you already need to expand. <laughs> I mean, you have got so many artifacts and it's not all about Ernie Hall. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy, but here at the museum, the namesake is Ernie Hall, but what we really like to focus in on is the local heroes and the local people, but we also highlight a lot of the national and world-renowned aviators like Howard Hughes in the Spruce Goose and Charles Lindbergh in the Spirit of St. Louis, Jimmy Doolittle in his GB Racer, uh, the propeller from the USS Akron airship. We have all kinds of really, really neat things here, um, nationally, internationally, but also what we really love to do is talk about the local people. And your acquisitions. Now this has been a personal interest of yours but since you were a little boy? Yes, that's true. Um, I grew up uh, right across the street from Ernie Hall's original airport. And as a very young boy, my older brother and my dad would take me over there. And I remember it like very, very vividly. And uh, at the time, Ernie was getting older and he was kind of crabby. I'd ask him for an airplane ride. He wouldn't give me one. Beat but, it, kid. Yeah, exactly. My dad would say, don't ask for airplane rides. But um, here, you know, Ernie's airport was, was torn down painstakingly and moved to the Trumbull County Fairgrounds where they were going to turn it into a museum. And a terrible dis uh, tornado storm came through in the early 80s, I believe it was, and, yeah. and wiped it out. So that was the end of that. So ever since then, I've wanted to do something like this. And you do tours for the school kids and yes. for different organizations. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is the reaction of the, the young kids when they come through? Yeah, Casey, it, it's probably the most exciting thing. I've said this since the beginning. When, if I could make the little kids in the cars driving down the street, North River Road, say, Mom and Dad, let's go see the airplanes. That's what I want to do. So I want them to tell them, let's go see the airplanes again. Uh, we get the kids in here, uh, college kids. I call them kids because I'm old. <laughs> elementary school kids, t uh, high school kids, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. They love it here. It's very interactive. You can touch things. You can sit in airplanes, pretend that you're a pilot. Um, that's what I want to do. Tell them a little history, and at the end of the day, we don't test them, because I didn't like tests when I was in school, but we, we have a little contest to see what they can remember and take away from the place. Now, the Red Baron would not be one of our local heroes. He was not a local <laughs> hero. He is definitely a world-famous uh, pilot from World War One. He's known for shooting down the, the Snoopy. Snoopy exactly, the Red Baron. that <laughs> darn but, Snoopy. But what he did in this airplane, this red Fokker triplane, is yes. he um, was able to shoot down 80 airplanes in World War I, making him the leading ace. And what we have here is actually fabric from the wing and from the tail of the Red Baron's airplane in which he got shot down in. Bill Hunter is on the board of directors here at the Ernie Hall Museum and very well informed on all things aviation. All things aviation. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, Bill, I really didn't know who Ernie Hall was prior to coming here. Well, we even still have some local people that don't know about Ernie Hall, and when they find out that he is actually from Holland, they are absolutely shocked. And then once they have an opportunity to look and see what Ernie did and how far back he went into aviation, then they walk away totally amazed because he was a pioneer. He, he stands beside the Wright brothers because he was an aviator, he was an engineer. If, it, if he had to build it and design it, he would design it and build it. And if it flew, he had fun with it. So he goes way, way, way back. And I love how during World War I, he actually didn't fly, but he taught all the pilots, and that is such a great story. And he didn't get enlisted because... He had supposedly bad eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> 
which That's I find crazy. hard to believe, you know. And he was enlisted as a civilian instructor by the U.S. Army Air Corps. It wasn't the Air Force at the time. And he was shipped off to a field in Texas, and it was it was Call Field, C A L L Field. And there's a little bit of it left down there right now, basically a street. But he went down there, and during World War One, he taught over 450 pilots in various types of airplanes, Curtis Jennies and things of that nature. Um, and then when World War I ended, he kind of stayed on and continued teaching. And before you knew it, he was back at different locations around the country teaching World War II pilots. He, w he was quite a character. I wish I would have known him better because I took six lessons and all of a sudden I had a family to raise. So the flying went downhill. Well, and, yeah, you know, but these so are the actual students. These are just a few, and believe it or not, there's quite a few on that list that are still alive. <laughs> and what is your biggest fundraiser? That's usually in August. Yeah, That's right, there. August. Uh, it's in August, and it's the Wings and Wheels, where we have uh, a collection of airplanes and cars all at the same place, and I like to call it a fair in, on the ground and in the air. Now this is a great facility and I love the way the back door opens. Is this available to rent for parties and things like that? Boy, am I glad you mentioned that because yes, we have, we have rented it to all kinds of uh, organizations, people who have, uh, banks that want to have a meeting place that's a little bit different than the boardroom. Yeah. Um, people who have had parties, birthday parties, kids' birthday parties is awesome. Yeah. You know, make it the, cro uh, the little dusty crop hopper. Birthday <laughs> yeah. All kind of yeah. great themes so, here, yeah. Yes, we would lo we love to rent it and our website has information about all that kind of stuff. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.